Hey everybody, and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Today we're going to make a really fun lighted bucket, and ours is going to be Halloween themed, but you can do lots of themes. I have a camping bucket tutorial I did a few months back, and you can use these for Christmas, birthdays, pretty much anything that your little heart desires. It's only going to take a few little tools and products to make this, which I will show you in just a minute. But I wanted to show you our lighted bucket and how cool this is. So this is our lighted bucket, and I'm, I'm hoping you guys can really see how well this lights up. It's really, really cool. And you can see our design that I'm going to show you guys how to put together. But I'm going to pull out our light so that you guys can see what it is. This is the only thing that's lighting that up. And this is a puck light from 651 Vinyl. I will link this below. It's really, really bright, and it has a lot of great settings. You can have it just stay solid, a single color if you'd like to. You can have it flash through your colors. You can have it strobe through your colors. You can have it fade through your colors. And then there's also a smooth transition through your colors, so it doesn't um, change and it's not too crazy. But you can do lots of different settings. It comes with a remote that has all these different colors on it that you can set it to. So you can change it just to a specific color if you just want it. So if we're doing Halloween and we just want it to be orange, you can simply just do that. These are waterproof, but you don't have to put water in the bucket if you don't want to, but it does help hold the bucket down. And these are really, really awesome for all sorts of events. So let's get to the workspace and I'm going to show you guys how we're going to put this all together. Just an FYI, I could not show you how to do this in design space. I was having a lot of issues that day with the update that they did. Um, but I did use 99% design space images for this, except for the fence, which I got this fence off of Google, but everything else, the bats, the witch, the tree, everything else, including the haunted house, is all from Design Space Access. So let's get ready and we can put this all together. These are all the supplies that you'll need to make your bucket. You'll need your vinyl. I used Matte Oracle 651 vinyl. I weeded with my trusty pin pen. You'll need a squeegee. Again, this one is from 651. Love these. I used a weeding ring to hold all of these tiny little pieces because you'll see there's tons from the house, from the fence, all sorts of little things pair of scissors to cut apart your vinyl because I made it so that it would save on vinyl versus um, putting it you know into its design on the bucket. You'll need your puck light. This is from 651 Vinyl. I will link this below but I love this thing. It lights up and it does a million different colors. It does flash. You can strobe it. You can have it do a fade from color to color. You can do a smooth color to color, but you'll see there's a zillion colors that you can change it to. You can actually lessen its brightness. You can, I don't know how well you guys can see that because it's pretty bright. Let me see if I can turn it on red. Maybe you'll see that better. So you can lessen its brightness or you can also make it brighter. I know it's pretty hard to see on camera, but it is a really cool product and it comes with the remote. You just need three AAA batteries for this. So let me go ahead and turn this off because this will go inside of our bucket and then you just need a five gallon bucket. This one is from Walmart. You can get these at Home Depot, Lowe's, um, Menards. There's a lot of places that sell them, but you'll get your bucket. And then the lid is typically sold separately, which it does usually say on top of the lid, but you'll want to grab a lid as well. So we'll put that off to the side. We don't need that right this second. But what we're gonna do now is um, take our vinyl apart so that we can put it into its little spots. So we're gonna cut the fence away from the house. And like I said, I did this to save on vinyl. This is one of those projects where you didn't, you could lay it out, but you didn't really have to lay it out if you didn't want to. I kind of liked the idea of this one by just doing it kind of fun and funky and doing it right on the bucket and seeing what I liked as I worked on my bucket. Now the bucket does have a warning on it about not drowning for your children. Um, a lot of people will remove those. Me personally, I don't, I don't like to remove them. I do like to keep that warning on there just for safety reasons. Most people know not to leave an open bucket around a baby, but still, you just don't necessarily want to open up yourself for something like that. So I don't take mine off, but people do and they use acetone. 
So I'm just going to cut the big pieces apart. And the bats, I'm, I'm going to leave just like this because we're going to apply these probably without transfer tape. So I'll show you guys that little trick. But right now, we're going to go ahead and get these all on the transfer tape. So this is a medium tack from 651 Vinyl. I love this transfer tape. It's awesome. So what I do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to unroll it. And I know it's going to be a little bit hard for you guys to see this against the table. But I'm going to unroll a pretty big space here. And you just want to take your decals, so your tree and your fences and your house. And what we're going to do, and I know there's totally like cat hair on these, but it's okay because it's not going to stick to your product. If you do have any animal hair on them, I would not sell them but my cats climb all over my craft table. So all I'm doing is laying my decals face down on my transfer tape. And I'm gonna save these little guys because I have like a little pumpkin and a gravestone and a witch. I'm gonna save those guys for later because I'll do those when I do the bats. So what I try to do is fit everything kind of on the transfer tape, but it doesn't always wanna fit great. So what you can do is just place it and you can always unroll a little bit more. And what we can do is take the spaces that we didn't use, so like this big spot, and we can either put those little guys on there or you can cut it and just place it right back on your roll because you can totally reuse it. But we'll just stick these little guys on here. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and just cut my transfer tape off of the roll. And we'll get that and put that to the side. So I will take my squeegee, and just from the back, I press all of my decals down. This is called burnishing. Um, I honestly think that's a weird word, and I don't like it, but whatever. And all you can do is just do that to each one of the little decals that you have here. And it just helps them stick to the transfer tape. And these are all fairly solid pieces, with the exception of the house. So you shouldn't have to do too much, and honestly, you can do too much. Sometimes if you burnish it too much, it won't come off of your transfer tape, or it won't come off of your um, backing. So you have to, there's kind of a happy medium, and you'll learn it as you practice. You just don't want to press too, too much. So we're going to go ahead and cut each of these guys apart. And then what I'm going to do is just take, start with the one like main design, which is going to be my house. And we're going to put that on the bucket. So we're going to set these guys all to the side. Now I will say the bucket is rolly and poly and it doesn't always like to stay in place. So we'll try to do our best to keep it with using the handle keep it from rolling too much but um here's the warning I was telling you about this one so what I do is I try to make sure that this piece right here is the direct back of the bucket so you can see the bucket's huge so I'll probably need to move you guys out because I can't get the bucket quite quite under you head move you guys around a little bit just to so you guys could get the whole bucket in so we're gonna take our haunted house and I always remove the backing from the vinyl and not the vinyl from the backing. I just find it works a little bit better and especially with something that has these little tiny pieces like these little grass pieces. It just helps me get everything to stay on the backing. Now I did lose a little piece of the grass when I was weeding because um, I was having some issues with design space not wanting to cut correctly. Now just a warning friends they did change some cut settings so you will want to do some test cuts, especially if you have a maker. Um, they changed the iron-on to everyday iron-on, and then they have another one that they sneakily stuck in there that says heat transfer product, I believe, non-Cricut brand. Don't use that. It doesn't work. It cuts through your vinyl. The pressure is insane. So you'll want to make sure that you use everyday iron-on on your Caesar brand. So what we're going to do is take our decal, and I did leave some extra transfer tape on the bottom of this. So that, that's actually going to work out in our favor because we're going to use that to help set our vinyl down. And we want to just get it nice and even with the bottom of our bucket. And the other reason that I didn't do this in one big fell swoop of a design is because our bucket is rounded. Now I do apologize, you probably can see all the cat hair that's stuck to my transfer tape. 
but my cats get onto everything. So, but we're gonna go ahead and use our squeegee and you're just gonna go ahead and go through and press down your vinyl. And then I'm just gonna come through. Now I do have another squeegee under this. It's holding my bucket at least semi from rolling, so it seemed to work. I've seen people make some PVC holders that work really good when they're doing cups and things. Now I do have one little piece of grass that didn't want to stay down, so we're just gonna help him along. And you're just gonna gently peel up your transfer tape. Again, this is a medium tack. Um, I do prefer this over just about everything, including contact paper. So if you're working with this matte vinyl, contact paper is honestly one of the hardest things to work with with it because the texture of the matte vinyl makes it really difficult for your contact paper to stick to it. So that's something you're gonna wanna consider when you are doing this bucket. Um, if you're going to use any matte vinyl for any of these designs, you're going to want to not use contact paper because it does not stick. So there is our cool house. So now we have a tree. We have two different trees and some fencing. I'm just going to move you guys a little bit because you're under my tree. Slide you back in. So we've got like this really cool tree. We have um, some fences. We've got this other cool tree. So let's see about, let's do a fence next. Cause I think a fence would look cool next to our house. So all I'm gonna do is take my bucket and just flip it a little bit so that I can place my fence. And I think that will look cool right there. So again, I just remove the backing from the vinyl and you can see how easily that works. And this is one of the reasons I love this medium jack. It works so, so well. And then you're just gonna kinda line your fence up about where you want it. And these do not have to be perfect. No one's gonna notice if it's not, you know, 100% perfect. And because we're doing a haunted house theme, it's totally normal to have some things that are maybe a little askew. And I did get a little bit of a crease right in that one, but that's okay, we can crease that out. Now you'll notice with this one, I did not burnish it at all because it sticks really well. And I wanted to show you guys how well the vinyl likes to stick to these plastic buckets. It's like its favorite thing. So I'm gonna flip it back this direction because I wanna put a tree over here. So I'm gonna try to get this thing to stay. The handle kind of gets in the way. So we could either do this really, really big tree or we've got kind of this little tree. I kind of like the big, big tree. So we're gonna do him. So again, I flip it over. I remove the vinyl from the backing, but this one didn't want to stick very well. So let me press that down again. And sometimes if it doesn't want to stick real well, if you peel it one way, if you peel it a different direction, it's a lot easier and it may have stuck better. So we're going to do that way. And again, with this, there's no rhyme or reason. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can just put it wherever your little heart desires. And I think that's pretty cool looking right there. So we're gonna go ahead and put this one right here. Now there is a little piece of the um, backing from one of the other decals on this little guy, but it's okay, because it's no big deal. Now him I am gonna burnish, because he's really big. And this is a really large decal. And you just wanna try to get any of the bubbles out. And as you can see, it fell off the little holder I had going. So we're just gonna make sure that he is well pressed on there. And you're just gonna do the same thing you did with the large haunted house. You're just going to lightly and carefully peel. And you'll notice that I peel at a very sharp angle. I almost roll my transfer tape off of my decal. I find this works a little bit better. It just lends itself to, especially these thin lines, sticking better. And you just want to go slow because there are a lot of branches. And if your branch doesn't stick, you can a lot of times just press it right back down and it will stick. So you just need to help it along and that's totally normal. So we're gonna get our tree on here. And again, don't feel like you have to do, like everyone calls these camping buckets and I already have a camping bucket. So I wanted to do a little more non-traditional and I wanted to go with a Halloween bucket because I like Halloween. So let's flip it back this way and let's put that little tree over here now, chances are no one's really gonna see too much on this side because of where the, um, the decal is, but it's okay. We're gonna go ahead and put 
my handle makes this very difficult sometimes to get it to sit. So we're going to put the little tree over here because I think it'll fit pretty nice. So again, we'll just remove the backing. Now I will say again, with the cut settings being a little bit different, there's a couple little spots in here on my matte vinyl that it cut a little deep on. So I probably need to mess with my settings a little bit more. But again, this is why we always recommend doing test cuts, especially if Design Space decides to do an update because they always, always, always mess with the cut settings. I don't know why. Now, they did an update this time because the new maker tools are coming out and I hope you guys are excited to see those because we'll be doing some tutorials on those very, very soon once they come in the mail because we did order them. So there's our other tree. So then we'll flip it this way and we get some of the fur off of there because it's very staticky. And we're gonna put our other piece of fencing over here. So let's see if we can get the bucket to stop rolling. There we go. So yeah, we're gonna put our other piece of fencing over here. And I got 99% of these designs that I'm using off of Design Space in the access, except the fence. Um, the fence I got off of Google and I just kind of traced it on, well, cleaned it up on Design Space and made it so that I could cut it. I just made it a cut file on there. And if you need to know how to do that, I do have a tutorial. It's like right towards the beginning of my videos. It's like one of the first ones that I ever posted. So it's, it's there. It's a little duck if you look for it. There's a duck on it. So let's see if we can... Get this peeled. Now this one I did burnish just because I noticed that it didn't really want to stick. Yeah, like, uh -huh, awesome. So occasionally that will happen. It doesn't always want to stick to your stuff. So I probably should have peeled this one a little bit slower. Now it did rip my vinyl, but honestly, because again, this is a haunted house and my little spider doesn't want to stick. I'm not really worried about that. No one will notice it. But for some reason over here, this stuff doesn't want to stick. Now I did forget to mention to you guys that I did clean this with alcohol. So you do want to make sure that you do that before you put your decal on because it will help clean off any of the oils from your hands, any dirt and debris from it sitting in the store, and it'll just make sure that your vinyl sticks a little bit better. Now I'm going to use this little piece of transfer tape and pop some of this cat hair off. This bucket is super staticky. Okay, so we've got all the big decals on, so I'll turn this so you can see. So you got your fence, your big tree, haunted house, another piece of fence, another tree. So it's already starting to look pretty spooky, but we do have some empty space. So what we're going to do is take some of our littler decals. So I have a witch and a pumpkin and a gravestone that I can use that are really small little guys. So let's do the witch first. I'm going to put her up in the sky. And I think I'm gonna put her right there so it looks like she's flying over the tree. And this is where you can kind of just play around with it and put stuff wherever you want. That you don't have to do, you know, anything too crazy. But you can kind of just play around with it, see what you like and design it however you want it to be designed. There's no right or wrong reason. I think the gravestone, I'm going to put the gravestone, I think right over here. This one is really small and was very hard to weed, but that pin pen made it super duper easy when it came to weeding time on that one. It was really easy to work with. I was very, very pleased with how well it worked with all these little spaces. And same with this pumpkin. This pumpkin had some really small spots in it. And see, here's where you can kind of mess around with it. And I think we'll put the pumpkin over here just to kind of fill this gap between here. Because like I said, I'm not really going to decorate right where that guy is just because it's the warning. And you could, like I said, you can take it off. I wouldn't recommend trying to cover it with like white vinyl because then your light won't shine through very well and it'll be super obvious. But you could absolutely just very simply not decorate right there. So now we have all these bats over here. Stop rolling. So we have all these bats. Now these ones I'm not gonna use transfer tape on because they're super small. So you're able to just peel them off just one at a time. 
And again, I think some of these, the backing is a little cut deep, so these might be a little more difficult. Again, we were having some cut setting issues. This was, I really wanted to show you guys this on Design Space, and I just had so many problems with it that I just could not get it to work. So we're gonna just take our bats, and you just lay them down just like they're stickers. So you don't have to use any transfer tape with these. And I've cut out a bunch of different style bats, different sizes, different shapes, different um, angles that they're flying at. So you guys can play with these, put them where you want. This would be a great thing for your kids to help with. If you guys were crafting with your kids, they can absolutely help you guys choose where to set the bats. So let me get all these bats going and on, and then we can come back and I'm gonna show you guys how that puck light comes into play with our bucket. I've got all my bats on, so this is our finished product. Now I know it's a little bit dark right now, and I'm gonna spin it a little bit so you guys can see what it looks like without the light on. So we've got all our little bats, our trees, our fences. Super spooky bucket. Now I took the handle off of my bucket because of where it sat on my design. I didn't like it in the way. So I did take my handle off. You don't absolutely can do that. You don't have to have your handle on. So I'm going to turn my light on and you guys can see how cool this is. I absolutely love these buckets. They're super easy to make. They're a lot of fun. You can be super duper creative with them too. You don't need to just use them for camping or for your front porch. They make awesome Halloween decorations, Christmas decorations, party decorations. They are really fun. You can actually just have one in your house. Put a cute little saying on it. Put your name on it. Use it all year round. The puck light inside is from, again, 651 vinyl. It needs three AAA batteries. I'm going to spin this around a little bit so you guys can see it while it's color changing. Look at how fun this is. I absolutely love how this came out. And again, I didn't lay it out. When I cut it, I just kind of figured out what would fit on my bucket. And I put it all together on here. And I put all the bats on. Now, I did cut a few extra bats, but that's okay because I can save them for a future project, which I love. Now, if you don't want your bucket to flash, you can absolutely change the colors by just using the remote. So you can have it do red, green, blue. You can do just white, which looks kind of blue, but it's white. And then there's a bunch of like other colors, just like these little, the little colors here you can change it to. So there's different shades of all the colors. And then you can have it do flashing, strobing, fading, all sorts of really fun settings. And it does come with the remote. And you can just simply turn it on and off. And it's really easy to use. I hope you guys had a fun time learning how to make this Halloween lighted bucket. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. Again, super sorry that I could not show you guys the design space aspect of this but again 99% of the design from this is from design space I just searched Halloween haunted house witch tree I found all sorts of cool stuff under there so I just pieced a bunch of their designs together to make this design have a wonderful day and happy crafting